Good morning. So for social studies, I decided that we're going to go ahead and record our lessons just like ELA because some people were having problems logging into Studies Weekly. So I figured why not go ahead and go through the articles together from the, the website. So let's get started. You're going to need your Studies Weekly, Week 2. We're going to go over this first top article and then this one right there. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up the website for everybody. And then we can go ahead and read. Stephen is walking out of the classroom when he notices something hanging behind Miss Johnson's desk. Hey, Natalia, look at this, Stephen calls out. Can it wait, Stephen? I would really like to look at some maps of Louisiana. This is a map of Louisiana, but it's different, Stephen replies. Let me see, says Natalia. What are those lines all over the map? I think I have some information about these in my notebook, Stephen says, flipping through its pages. Aha, I found it. The lines are called latitude and longitude. They help you find places. How do they work? The lines that run up and down are called longitude. Each line on the grid has a number. I see those. They run from 94 degrees west to 89 degrees west. That's right, Natalia. The lines that run across the map are called latitude. They start at 29 degrees north and go to 33 degrees north. I see those too, Natalia says excitedly. Okay, so what do we do with them? Great question. You use them to tell other people where places are. Some places aren't close to degree lines. Because of this, there are lines even closer together. They are called minutes and seconds. Just like on a clock? On a clock, minutes and seconds are smaller parts of an hour. You got it, Natalia. I bet we'll learn more about minutes and seconds later. For now, let's just look at degrees. See New Orleans? You start with latitude the lines that go across. It's at about 30 degrees north. Then you look at longitude. It's 90 degrees west. You could say New Orleans is located about 30 degrees north, 90 degrees west. Oh, I see, exclaims Natalia. The coordinates for Columbia are about 32 degrees north, 92 degrees west. You know, Stephen, my parents use different directions. My mom and dad like to go on drives, but they use different words. Like north, east, south, and west, interrupts Stephen. Yes, my dad might say we're heading south. Last month, we went north all the way to Arkansas. What happens when you're going somewhere that's not just one direction, asks Stephen. Like, if I left Kisechi National Forest to go to New Orleans, I would go south and east. Oh, yeah. Those are called intermediate cardinal directions. You can combine north or south with east or west. You could go northwest from the Gulf of Mexico to get to Texas, or southeast from Alexandria to get to the Louisiana State Capitol in Baton Rouge. And it can get even more specific if you were headed south and east, but more south than east, you could say you're going south by southeast. If you were traveling closer to due east, you could say east by southeast. That's great information, Natalia. I better add it to my notebook. All right. So, let me pull that back up. If, think of a circumstance in which I would use minutes and seconds for travel and not for telling time. Think of a circumstance in which I would use minutes 
in seconds for travel and not for telling time. Well, minutes and seconds are used when the location is near a line of latitude and longitude and a coordinate is not able to be provided. So that's a little information that we may want to know for the future. Let's look at our own newspapers. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'm going to bring back up the, a camera. All right, and here's my newspaper. Let's see if I can focus. All right, so let's look at this phrase right here. It says, see New Orleans? You start with the latitude, the lines that go across. It says about 30 degrees north. Then you look at longitude, it's 90 degrees west. You could say New Orleans is located about 30 degrees north and 90 degrees west. Now, I want you to underline New Orleans is located about 30 degrees north and 90 degrees west on your own newspaper. So take your pencil and underline it just like I did. But what I want to actually look at is the actual map that is right there on your newspaper. So it says New Orleans is located 30 degrees north. So first, we want to find New Orleans. It's right here. Do we see it right there? So the way that they found the coordinates 30 degrees north and 90 degrees west, well, the line of latitude is what goes side to side. So latitude goes side to side. Do we see right here? It says 30 degrees north. Well, we follow it along and New Orleans is located on this line of latitude. Longitude is up and down, so north to south. Latitude is east to west. Longitude is north to south. You see we have the 90 degrees west right here. So that can make it a little less blurry for you. And if you follow it down, we find New Orleans. So do we get that? 30 degrees north, 90 degrees west. And don't forget to underline that sentence right here. Okay? So now we're going to look at the Louisiana Places article in our newspaper. Let me pull back up my screen. We're going to find it on the Studies Weekly. Homepage. Look, it's the article right underneath Louisiana is on the map. But first, before we start, make sure you go down and answer these questions. Earn your coins and so I know that you've done your work. Okay, so let's go to Louisiana Places. Compared to other states, Louisiana has a long history. There are many landmarks across the state. A landmark is a place that is important. Landmarks are usually different from their surroundings and are known because of their history. New Orleans is an old city. It was founded in 1718 by the French. Though times have changed, many places are still known by their French names. One landmark that stands out from the rest of the city is Louis Armstrong Park. Louis Armstrong was a famous musician. You might have heard his song, What a Wonderful World. It was written over 50 years ago. Louis played the trumpet. Louis was born in the back of town area. This was one of many areas where jazz music originated from. Inside of the Louis Armstrong Park is another landmark. Congo Square. Congo Square was a place enslaved people got together on Sundays during the early 1800s. 
It was normal at that time for enslaved people to be given Sunday off from their work. While they were there, they could sing, dance, and make music. Many people gathered to see traditional African dances. The first New Orleans Jazz Festival was held at Congo Square. Well, I had no idea it was held at Congo Square. That's really cool. Let's go back. And like I said, make sure you answer all those questions. I've already answered the first one. A place that is important is called a landmark. So if I were you, I would go ahead and underline this sentence. A landmark is a place that is important. Go ahead and underline it in your newspaper. You can make sure you highlight it on your website, but make sure you underline it with your pencil on your newspaper. A landmark is a place that is important. All right. So before we go, I want to go back to Louisiana's on the map. There's a really cool video. I'm not sure if some of you have seen it before or not, but there's a really cool feature about our Studies Weekly website is that you can explore more. It'll bring up some pictures, you know, maybe some little activities for us to do on our own. There's also a watch video. This video is about maps, which this is what we're learning about this week, so I think it's kind of cool we can go ahead and watch it. Cartography is the art and science of making maps. A person who makes maps is called a cartographer. In ancient times, people had to draw maps, but now we have computers. Modern cartographers can use satellite technology to make precise, detailed maps. The first ancient maps were carved into clay tablets by the Babylonians in 600 BC. As the age of discovery began and explorers were finding new lands, maps became essential. Rulers were anxious to show off their newly claimed lands with maps. Maps also guided settlers to a safe place to colonize. In the 1600s, Gerardius Mercator created the Mercator Projection Map. This flat map allowed sailors to plot their destinations on fixed lines. It was very helpful for explorers. By the 1700s, cartography improved even more. One important advance occurred when Sir Isaac Newton proposed that the Earth was not a perfect sphere. His idea was that the Earth bulges at the equator and flattens at the poles. Different types of maps are used for different things. Farmers use maps to show them which part of their land is the warmest and which has the best soil. Pilots use special maps that show distance, elevation, and other important information needed when flying. Hikers use maps to show them where trails are located and where water can be found. Meteorologists have maps that help them track weather patterns. To be a cartographer, you need to know a lot about science and math. Cartographers can work in many different fields. The military needs people to create maps for soldiers stationed all over the world. The National Forest Service makes maps for hiking trails and campsites. And the government needs cartographers to help find the best places to build roads and highways. Wherever a cartographer works, their job is important. Wow, that's really cool. Maybe I should go be a cartographer. Let's not start again. All right, guys. So be sure you you follow you have followed along with both of these articles. You should have a green check mark when it's finished. And be sure you've answered all your questions down at the bottom. Okay? If you have any questions, just let me know. And I will see y'all later. Bye, guys.